Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and today in this video we're going to talk about using canvases in Fusion 360 and how we can scale those to the right size. Hey everyone, this is Matt, and to get started, we're going to carry on our Fusion 360 Forms course by first learning how to insert an image. We want to do this with an image of a car because this is a pretty common thing that people need to do, and cars generally will have blueprints that you can find for free online. There are also paid versions, and when you buy the blueprints online, you generally are getting a much higher resolution and a larger image to work with, and that can really help to make sure that you get the resolution needed to match these details. What we're gonna be doing is I simply went on Google and I found a WRX image that can be used. Now, this is traditionally called um, a bug eye WRX and because of the spoiler and the scoop on the hood, this is most likely an STI, but it's just something I found online. If you guys wanna search and find your own blueprints, the process generally requires you to take one image that has multiple views, usually a front, back, side, and hopefully a top view. In this case, I wasn't able to find a top view with this, but you generally will take those and you will cut them into individual images. You can also go ahead and download this design that already has the blueprints inserted by going to the description of this video. You can download the Fusion file that already has these blueprints, but if you wanna follow along, I suggest that you take a look online and just find three blueprints and the process will be exactly the same. To start this process from scratch, we're gonna begin a brand new design and I still have all my defaults in Fusion 360 set how they come when you install it and my units are set to millimeters. This is gonna work fine because the units on the blueprint I'm using are set to millimeters. The first step in this process is for us to use insert and select canvas. You'll need to locate the images you wanna use. And in some cases you can actually upload and store these inside of your project in Fusion, but I'm gonna insert them for my computer. I generally like to start with the side view because this is gonna help me align the front back and the top if I had it. So we'll insert the side view. I'm gonna pick the right plane. In this case, it's gonna be the YZ plane. I'm gonna rotate around to the right. And I wanna make sure that it stays centered at the origin for now. I'm not gonna modify any of the settings, but I do wanna note that we have canvas opacity, display through, and then all the rest of the default settings. We're gonna say okay. And now that we have this image, we wanna scale it to the proper size. So I'm gonna zoom in and note that I have two values, 25, 40 millimeters for the wheelbase, and I have 44, 15 for the overall length of the car. In order for us to scale this, we want to expand the canvases, right click, and then select calibrate. We're going to pick two points. And in this case, I'm going to left click on the first point that's at the front of the wheelbase. And I'm going to pick on the rear point here. Notice that it's coming in about nine millimeters. So in order to scale this properly, we need to hit 2540, hit enter. I'm going to double click my mouse wheel, which will fit to screen. Now we've appropriately scaled this so we know that we have the right size based on the blueprint. If you download a blueprint that is not appropriately scaled, then it's just gonna cause problems downstream. This is gonna work for us. And the next step for me is generally to expand my origins. I wanna take a look at the X, Z plane, and then I'm gonna construct an offset plane. I'm gonna bring this forward, and while this isn't strictly required, what I like to do is I like to put a plane at the front of the car, and this is gonna allow me to place the front image in the front of the car. And the reason I like to do this is because we're gonna have a front and a back, and it makes a lot more sense to have the front image at the front of the car, or the back image at the back of the car. This also helps me do a quick check to see if the scale that I'm working with is right. So I'm going 2275 millimeters in the minus Y direction, that looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna say okay. And notice that I now have a plane here. If we expand the construction folder and we take a look at plane one, I'm gonna left click and then click again, and I'm gonna rename this car front. I don't really need to see it, but now that it's selected, I can go to insert canvas, and I can select that WRX front image. When we do this, once again, I'm simply gonna say okay with the default settings. I'm gonna right click on the image and calibrate. I'll need to go to a front view, 
zoom in and notice that the image is actually backwards. That's fine. It doesn't really matter in this case, but uh, if you can't read those values, when you insert the image, you might want to mirror it and flip it about that vertical axis. So here we're going to have 1490. That's going to be center to center for the wheels. And that's going to give me the appropriate scale. One thing you'll note is that this is not really in the right position. It's offset to the left a little bit. So we need to move it. In order to do this, we can just right click and edit the canvas, and then we can move it around to the appropriate spot. I want to make sure that it's centered left and right, which means that we're going directly through the middle of the Subaru emblem and the hood scoop. But when we rotate this around, we also want to make sure that the wheels are at the same ground plane. So in order to do this, I'm going to click on the up arrow. Notice that it's at 45.627 millimeters. I'm going to enter 40. Notice that brings it up quite a bit. So I'm going to go to 44 and hit enter. And we can see that it's not quite in the right position, so we need to do just a little bit more work to move it. When you manually move it up and down, sometimes it's just going to jump a little bit too much. So I'm going to do minus 45 and see if I can get close, minus 40. And that looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to say OK in that position. Now that we have the front in place and it looks like it's in the right orientation, we can create another offset plane. So once again, we'll go to that XZ or that front, and we're gonna go offset plane, and this time we're gonna pull it to the rear. It's not strictly required that it matches up with the overall length of the car. You just wanna make sure that you can see it from the front or the back. I'm gonna rename that car rear. Once again, I'm gonna hide it. I don't really need to see it. While it's selected, I'm gonna insert a canvas. And I'm going to pick that WRX back. Once again, this process is exactly the same no matter what canvas you're using or what image you're using. It doesn't have to be a car. It can be any sort of product. But the important thing is to understand the size and scale. We're going to calibrate that. Once again, we're going to go to the back view. And we're going to make sure that we select points on the image and then 1495. Now you can see that it looks pretty good. I'm going to right click and edit the canvas and this is actually quite a bit easier for us to align because we now can see the front image as well as the back image and you should be able to use the side view mirrors uh, the tires the ground plane all these different things to help align it so that looks pretty good and this is a general reference this doesn't have to be perfect but this gets us pretty close we'll say okay and now we have our front and our rear images aligned to each other and we have our side image. So everything looks pretty good here, and now it's time for us to save this. I'm gonna call this car blueprints, keep it pretty general. And now we wanna talk about some of the different things that we need in terms of creating our form bodies. So these canvases that we added to Fusion 360 in the planes, these are all in the design, and we can see them in the timeline. This means that we can go back and change them, we can make modifications whenever we need to, but remember that when we're working with forms bodies, there is no timeline that's been captured. So we need to plan the methodology behind creating these forms and how we really wanna work with these shapes. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be working on just a single part of this car just to explore the process. We're not gonna be modeling the entire car. That process takes quite a bit of time. Um, and honestly, it's extremely complicated. You can do a very basic version of it, but to get all the little details that we need, it's really difficult to do. So it's well outside of just learning forms, but it is a pretty exciting process. And I think a car has enough general or basic shapes that we can uh, actually dive in and we can make some of them and you can get a good understanding of that process. So to get started in that process, we wanna make sure that we do have our save design and we're gonna go to create form. There are a couple different forms that we can create when we're talking about starting with a car. When we look at create, we've already explored creating an extrude based on a sketch. We understand what that does. But generally, when people start a form, they'll start with a box, potentially a cylinder or a quad ball. These are very common things to start your designs with. When we're working on a car, we generally are going to be starting with a face or a plane. Now, these faces or planes allow us to begin at a single position or a single face 
and begin working out from there. Uh, it's a little bit easier when we're trying to match curvature that exists to start with a very small piece of the puzzle. So for this example, let's get started by first making um, a single face and let's begin exploring how we can create that geometry. So I'm gonna select face. It's gonna ask me to first select a plane that I wanna create it on. So if we rotate around, we are going to get started by trying to create the hood without the hood scoop. So in order to create that, I actually wanna start on the top. This is a little tricky because we don't have a top view, but it is gonna give us a good chance to begin sketching out a box and creating that first face. Notice that we can continue to add to it. We can add edges, we can chain, we can uh, mul multiply the number of sides. In this case, we're gonna just use four-sided, but there are loads of different options that we have. We're gonna say okay from here, and before we move any further, I'm gonna go into symmetry, and I'm gonna select mirror duplicate. We're gonna select the T-spline body, and then we need to select the mirror plane. In our case, it's gonna be YZ, Notice that we want to weld them together, and then we're gonna say okay. Now if we look at this from the top, we've got two faces. We've created one, but we've got two because we mirror that geometry. And if we were to select one of the vertices and use edit form and begin to manipulate it, you can see that it's changing everything. It's moving both sides, and that's the same thing with the edges, if we were to grab them and move them around. Because we have that symmetry, we are now able to manipulate the geometry on one side of the car and exactly match it on the other. So we're gonna undo, we're gonna undo those changes, go back into symmetry and notice that we also have a mirror internal. If we had created multiple faces that already went across the midline, we would wanna use that mirror internal because that would let us select two sides and then it would automatically force symmetry. But again, for ours, we're gonna use duplicate, go across that midplane, weld them together and now we have a good starting point. I'm gonna to go to a right view, I'm gonna box select everything, and I wanna move this up and into place. I'm gonna start it at roughly the back edge of the hood, and then I'm gonna rotate this around so that it roughly matches that shape. And we're gonna to have to do a lot of work here, so don't worry about getting it perfect, but we just wanna get it roughly into position. I'm gonna left click to deselect, and then I wanna select this front edge. I'm gonna bring this front edge back to about the front opening of the hood scoop. If we rotate this around, we can see what we've done here. And then let's go to our front view and we can take a look at how wide this is. So I'm gonna box select the right side and I'm just gonna bring this in. I'm not gonna make changes to multiple directions. So you'll notice that when I'm working in a front view, I'm only moving it in X and Z. So for example, if I take this vertex, I'm only moving it along the X axis. This is gonna be important because once we start to rotate, if we start to free move these edges, it becomes really hard for us to control. So at this point, let's hit okay on edit form. Let's go back to a home view and note that we have started to create the general shape of the hood. We're nowhere near complete on this. We've just gotten started but this is the very basis for getting started on a complex design. Putting these blueprints in if we're trying to replicate something and then beginning with a very basic shape. We started with a single face and we added symmetry so we can see what it looks like across the midplane. We only have to control one side. And as we move forward with this design, what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore ways that we can add additional faces and we can start to create the curvature to help represent that hood shape. This is gonna be kind of complicated because we don't have a top-down view. A top-down view is extremely helpful, but to our benefit, the shape of the hood on this WRX is relatively consistent across the entire car. So if we look at it from the front, it does have this little section here where it starts to flare back up on the fender, but we can get a pretty good idea of what that hood is gonna look like by using some of these lines and replicating that geometry. So I'm not too concerned. We're not gonna be modeling the entire car. This will give you a good idea of the process. But before we move on, make sure that we always save our work because those save points are gonna be critical, especially when we're talking about working with these forms. And you can certainly continue to play around with this, adding your own geometry, 
But in the next video, we'll start to explore how we can add additional edges and faces, and then we'll start to learn more about how we can replicate the curvature. As always, if you guys have any comments or questions, please leave them on the video. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.